up with this abandoned furniture that I, that I collect from the street or found objects, but also archive photography and some building portrait or architectural portrait. So I decided to have this verticality that was speaking to the pillar, but also to the surrounding architecture and to add that as much as possible some fragment of archive and building pictures to have this conversation about like a glass reflection but also kind of relation of like a, a lot of windows that all have, have a certain way of reflecting stuff. No? So every window of my sculpture in fact is, a, is an image. So it's a kind of a small scale building also filled with a lot of stories, uh, inhabitant or ghost stories. This uh, desire to address absence and what's lack and what's forget or what's all this emptiness around us. You know? Like how like when you create a space as a sculpture, how are you impacting on your context or how are you creating like a full space where you put your sculpture, but maybe an empty space if you can enter the sculpture. And then there is a inside, outside space. And you induce a certain circulation and how like all our relation with what surround us is all about that. What are you looking for in the architecture? Like is it functional, but is it also like a way of reflecting a certain history or a certain use and how can you deal with certain memory? Which ghost are you living with? I started this series two years ago uh, at the new Utrecht Avenue in, in Brooklyn. I knew this street from a famous picture from the 70s, The French Connection, um, a film who inspired me a lot because his new view, his new look from, from Brooklyn and from from New York. So I went there and I took a lot of pictures from the street under the train tracks, kind of urban situations. Later on, I also made photos from the platforms, from the train stations. On, on some places you have some some good possibilities to create um, overviews a little bit above the um, street level, which is an um, interesting perspective for, for me. Then I had to go back because of the pandemic. And when I came back here in March this year, I considered to expand this series all over this uh, train lines in the Bronx, in Queens, in, in Brooklyn. And, and this is what I did. What I did now, the, the last two months, I have took a lot of pictures, kind of um, overview and urban landscapes all over these places, but also some, sh some shots from, from the street levels. And for this group show, I selected six images, but the whole series is maybe now about 120 photographs. The two works you see at the show are called Prototipo 1 and Prototipo 2. Prototype 1 and Prototype 2. And since I'm working on the moment of translating a language that is not spoken and has no grammar at all, and also nobody knows how to speak it, um, all the translations are prototypes that come out of, of that um, journey into the void.
So in my work, I use different material approaches um, depending on the place and the conditions I'm responding to. Overall, I'm interested in what materials and what objects can tell us about the conditions we've created. You know, how can we connect with making to carve out a space of agency? For rising, I made a pile of gift bows um, out of terracotta clay that I rolled and I fired. Uh, each individual gift bow has a mineral glaze on it and collectively they're in the colors of the seasonal change of leaves. Um, usually celebratory and ephemeral, each gift bow, you know, I wanted to make them um, out of the opposite, clay from the earth. You know, rising came out of my pandemic experiences of um, disorientation and of loss. So creating each bow, I think, helped mark out time for me with the comfort and, um, you know, the ritual of the handmade. So for the work day in, out, um, that includes stacks of work shirt sleeves that I've created um, using single sheet of office paper for each sleeve. Um, I first started with um, hand-drawn patterns onto each sheet, you know, using like, uh, you know, colored pencils and graphite and ink. And um, that was to mimic machine-made cloth. And then I folded each sheet and I machine and hand-stitched it to look like a sleeve. The stacks are anchored down by um, concrete that I've mixed and cast. And then exhibited uh, in the window ledge is my work, Former Bosses. I actually began this piece back in 2007 uh, while working in an office job in New York City. Um, I used materials from my desk, you know, paper clips, and I recreated all of my boss's first names. So uh, the work does continue to today, and I've added new names with each new position I've had. The works that I'm showing, they are not exactly from the same series. They were made in different moments of these last two years, but they have some strong similarities between them. First, they spent all these two years in my studio, so they are part of the development of my research about painting and my thinking about colors and the sensitivity of surface. So. They are portraits of this moment of isolation. Secondly, they were once a completely different painting. I started the three of them on one of my my last walking through landscapes before the pandemic exactly in 2019. But I never finished this exactly landscape. I chose to cover it up with the, the experience of the studio and the experience of the isolation. Thinking that the landscape that I started at the site is just a, a trigger for for an experience that can be completed at the studio and an uh, experience that evolves a lot of other different uh, elements that is not exactly on the landscape. So they, they have this strong ambiguity on them. They were from a place that I saw, but they are a completely different place, even for me, because they are a place of my negotiation with the language of painting. I believe that uh, what we do is important, not what we call ourselves. Uh, in my opinion, artist is an empty word, just like the cut out figure in my painting. One becomes an artist or not by what one creates, not by naming it, like the figure standing outside the painting, independent and uh, critical. It is pathetic to think I am an artist and now I must create something. At this, the same time, art is one of the three important fields of human life that tries to answer the question why, next to science and religion. A human being will stop destroying himself and the world in which he lives when the, these three areas of human civilization merge into one. But uh, we don't know if uh, the world will live to see this moment. <laughs> 